ever get in a fight with a canvas? <laughs> I have. I most recently let it actually steal my mojo. I just sat there in bewilderment and let it just steal all of my joy. Until finally, I got up the nerve to come back to the canvas and go, <laughs> you will not win the war. But you know what, let me just take you down on the table, show you the canvas, show you kind of what happened to me. You're gonna think it's really no big deal. And I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, but for me, I don't know. I, I think we've all experienced that, right? Mm, or maybe I'm just the crazy one. I don't really know. Throughout my entire art journey, I've always bought the same canvas from the same distributor. I've never tried a different canvas. Um, and this time, I went to the local art store here because I didn't feel like ordering a bunch of canvases because I was kind of unsure as to the direction I wanted to take my art. And so I just bought a few canvases. And um, yeah, that's tricky. I come to find out not all canvases are created equal. So my name is Fini Remind. If you've never been here before, I'm a lunatic when it comes to art or pretty much anything in my life. But if you have been here before, this is nothing new to you. <laughs> the crazy that I am. And uh, yeah, so. Let's get started. All right, so let me demonstrate for you how this stole my mojo. So you can see, this was painted over originally and I hated it. I just it over the entire top and now I want to show you like what happened and why I struggled with this canvas. Normally I do like a nice deep edge canvas. This time I didn't, which I'm now hmm, regretting, but let me flip this bad boy over. It's a 70 by 70, you see this cross beam. And see, I can't even get my finger underneath. Normally on the deeper edge, you can. And you know what, let me flip this back over again because I'm not gonna be able to explain this. But what was happening as I was painting this, I was getting like this whole cross beam, like the stretcher holder bar thingies. I was like leaving an imprint on my painting and I hated it. And then on top of that, if you've ever watched any of my videos, I love to paint the sides black. That's my thing. So in my infinite wisdom, I thought, well, I much as I hated the stretcher bar imprint on the front of the canvas, I thought, well, I'll paint the sides and that'll well, maybe some magically make it better. But you see, it's got like a radius edge. So when I tried to paint this black sides, I don't know, like I didn't like the radius edge. Normally I get like a 90 degree angle on the deep edge, but this time I didn't. So I just sat here for three weeks after vacation, staring at this thing, pissed off at the world, and I couldn't figure out what the heck to do. So now I'm back and I'm going to figure out how to salvage this thing and what I'm going to do. And I think the only way I can cover up this whole stretcher bar situation on the canvas is to cover it with texture, a uh, heavy duty texture. So I'm gonna use some modeling paste. Yeah, some fine modeling paste. I'm gonna use both coarse and fine and I don't know, randomly put this all over the canvas and kind of just see what happens. All right, now that should do it. I'm gonna let this oh, dry overnight, or maybe I'll take a blow dryer to it, I don't know yet, I might cheat. And then once it's dry, we'll come back in and I'm feeling like a little bit of an ochre kind of yellow. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, well that was fast. And now you can see the two different textures, the coarse and the fine are dry color, different color. So I'm gonna adjust the whole thing anyway. And like I always do, if I'm gonna apply paint, I usually lay out some saran wrap next to me. People have seen me do this before. I, don't know, I just kind of like to use that as my palette as opposed to using my silicone mat left over from my paint pouring days. But so first thing I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna take some gesso, I'm gonna apply, kind of get some even tones. Plus it's not gonna eat up as much paint. It's gonna act like a bit of a primer on the porous surface of the modeling paste. So I don't know why I'm putting this here. So let's just blob it on here and paint it all over this whole thing and cover it up with gesso, let it dry, and then we'll come back and figure out what we're gonna do. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take some yellow ochre. 
I'm going to put it over here on my silicone, or what do you call it, my saran wrap. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of my pouring medium. And then I think I'm just going to apply it like all over the canvas with a wet paintbrush. And I don't know, kind of drag it across and ah, see what I get. Now that I have the yellow ochre down, I'm going to go through all of my Vivid Intense. I'm lucky enough to be a color art affiliate, so I've got like lots of paint. So I'm going to go and pull out anything that's yellow, orange, variation of yellow, orange. And I'm going to list everything that I end up using ultimately down in the description box. You can go check it out. And of course, use my affiliate code if you'd like to experience some of this Vivid Intense stuff yourself. I'm even going to use the fluorescence. Yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to, you know, <laughs> through it all. And uh, yeah, that way at least I'm prepared for something magical to happen. I have a whole other box of stuff here too. Oh, and I also have, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, acrylic inks, metallics. I've never used these before, so let's see kind of what they do. Oh, and I forgot I had these too. I don't know, they're, they're transparent acrylic inks by Liquitex. I don't know, in like um, burnt sienna and stuff. So who knows? Let's just, I don't know, throw it on the canvas and kind of see what happens. You know, what's the worst, right? I already ruined this thing once, so ruining it a second time is really not going to matter. I never, I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, now that I'm not hating this yellow orange, I'm gonna start throwing down some turquoise colors and maybe a little bit of olive green. I don't know yet. I'm just really trying to get my confidence back up. I don't know if you've ever felt that way before, but I know I have. There's been a few times like a painting and it doesn't seem such a big deal at the time, but it really throws you off your game. And you just, I don't know, you feel like you've got imposter syndrome. You're not sure how to move forward and it takes a while to get back in there. So for me, I'm just hoping I don't create a mess on the canvas. It builds up my confidence again so I can just get back to creating because that really is, you know, where I get most of my joy. You know, sometimes other stuff in life, this is like my only outlet to really just focus on what's important to me and forget and let the whole world around me just kind of fall away and forget about it, even if it's just for a couple of magical hours. So let's see what happens. Oh, and maybe you wanted to know what that just was. That was just gesso applied with the catalyst wedge. I don't know. I was kind of thought, well, let's just add another layer of color in there. So let's break it up with the gesso and then come back over top with, again, the orangish yellow palette. Again, just to create a texture piece with lots of dimension and color, this is kind of painstakingly what you have to do. I personally find it fun. Throw color on top of color, play with it all, and then... Just keep reloading. And you know what? If you make a mistake, it's okay. If you hate the weight gesso or white titanium white or whatever you want to do, just paint over it again. I mean, it's it's art. I know. I just went on and on about how it, you know, stole my mojo and wrecked my creativity and I needed to get my courage back. But at the same time, once I'm into it, I love to play with color, add multiple layers and just have fun. So again, it's just paint. All right, so now I've got the foundation of the concept that I want. I'm just going to leave it, let it dry overnight, look at it for a little bit, and then come back another day and figure out how to go forward to kind of add that finishing touch that'll finish off this piece completely. Mm -hmm. 